In this video, we'll be comparing four of the most dominant display types when it comes to mobile devices, talking about AMOLED, OLED, IPS, LCD, and Retina. As usual, we'll be breaking each technology down to bits and pieces, unveiling how each one will affect your viewing experience. First, let's look at the basics. If you're familiar with our videos, you'd already know by now that every display type is made of tiny little block of cells called pixels. Each pixel consists of three other sub-pixels which are green, red, and blue. They are called primary colors because when placed together, by adjusting the intensity of each color, you can produce every other color. If you mix primary colors in your finance classes, then deep down you already know what your TV does in each pixel. To know more about how display works, you can watch our other videos or simply subscribe to expand your knowledge on picking out the best electronic products. So let's look at AMOLED. AMOLED simply means Active Matrix OLED or Active Matrix Organic Light Emitting Diode. In actual sense, you can't talk about AMOLED without talking about OLED as AMOLED is a loped form of OLED. OLED means organic light emitting diode, which means each pixel emits its own lights to combine the three colors we mentioned earlier, like tiny little LED bulbs. On the flip side would be LCD, which uses blue or white LED bulb backlights, along with color filters to isolate each color, and liquid crystals to regulate the intensity of light that goes through each color. The active matrix in AMOLED talks about the ability of each individual sub-pixels to turn itself off and on really fast. This is done using TFT transistors. So let's break down the technical jargon TFT. TFT means thin film transistor. A transistor is basically a switch, but an automatic switch, which can be controlled by a processor to turn something on or off really fast using simple 1 and 0 commands. Now imagine each OLED pixel is a light bulb. The TFT would be tiny individual switches behind them, turning them on and off really fast or slow. This is why the display type and the kind of graphic processor a TV, tablet or smartphone has would greatly affect the refresh rate of that device. Refresh rate is just another technical jargon describing how fast these pixels can go on and off. And the TFT is what does the switching. Here's a practical example. If you bring, let's say, Google Pixel 9, which has AMOLED display and has its TFT switches receiving command from the Mali G715 graphic processor, which all leads to 120 Hz refresh rate, and place it side by side with the older Pixel 6 having a Mali G78 graphic processor leading to a 90 Hz refresh rate. Try scrolling real fast on both phones. You would observe the Pixel 9 scrolls faster and smoother compared to the Pixel 6. If you zoom closer, you would observe this difference in speed and smoothness is because the sub-pixels on the Pixel 9 are switching on and off faster, while that of Pixel 6 still has a little delay only observed in milliseconds. This difference in switching speed of the TFT will also affect other experiences such as gaming, browsing the web, video recording, especially at higher resolutions like 4K. This also explains why some lower resolution camera phones in terms of megapixels can still record better videos compared to some higher resolution camera smartphones. The difference is the GPU. GPU is another technical jargon we need to destroy. GPU stands for Graphic Processing Unit. Imagine a translator middleman helping an Englishman give instructions to a Chinese man. He basically receives the instructions in English, writes it down in Chinese, and hands the paper to the Chinese man to follow the instructions. What that middleman does is what the GPU does. The GPU is a translator. It takes instructions from your smartphone or TV, converts it into on and off commands for the TFT to obey. This in turn causes the pixels at different areas of the screen to turn on or off, just like the light bulb and the switch we talked about earlier. This process is called rendering. Rendering is another technical jargon, but before we continue, remember to subscribe as we help you detect the best products and avoid expensive buying mistakes. Rendering is simply taking a digital instruction and translating it to a bunch of on and off commands for pixels on your display to obey. Active simply tells you the speed at which the TFT or switches can turn the pixels on and off is really fast. 
Matrix is a concept telling you each grid of pixel has its individual TFT or switch. On the flip side would be PM OLED, which is passive matrix OLED, usually found on smaller, simpler displays in small devices. You'd find AMOLED on smartphones, smartwatches, PCs, and some high-end TVs. IPS, on the other hand, is a type of LCD display used primarily in situations where viewing angle is prioritized over contrast. IPS means in-plane switching. The subpixels are shaped in a way that enables you view the screen from any angle without experiencing a color wash. Unlike OLED and AMOLED, IPS is an LCD display, which means it uses a backlight and individual pixels are not self-lit. Devices with IPS panel would not have a very strong image contrast due to the increase in spacing between pixels caused by the shape of the sub pixels. On the flip side would be VA or vertically aligned LCD, which has a very strong contrast but with a narrow viewing angle. A good example of IPS devices would be the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro and the Hisense A-Series TVs. Retina display was introduced by Apple in June 7th of 2010 with the iPhone 4 at the company's Worldwide Developers Conference. Retina simply involves fitting more pixels in a smaller screen area. The number of pixels per inch on a retina display would be four times more than that on a regular display. The aim of making the pixels smaller and more in number is to greatly improve the picture quality for both contrast and image clarity. Using smaller pixels means curved text can appear smoother, even when viewed in close range. The term retina was used as the design of the screen is specifically meant to deceive the retina of the eye. So even when you take a closer look at the screen, you still can't see the individuality of the pixels because they are all smaller and more in number. This means a retina display can be AMOLED, OLED or LCD with a higher pixel density. This makes retina devices ideal for reading tiny text and graphical works. Only downside being how expensive they are, replacing a retina screen on a MacBook for instance can cost as much as half the price of the entire product. Another kind of display would be the Super AMOLED display, which is an enhanced form of AMOLED display for touchscreen devices, where the touch sensitive layer is fused directly on the screen to create a thinner, less reflective, brighter and more colorful display compared to a regular AMOLED. On mobile devices, for instance, if you have a damaged screen, you have to replace both the screen and the touch. That's the downside of Super AMOLED. So a perfect display would be an AMOLED OLED or Super AMOLED Retina display, which you'd find on the recent iPad and MacBook Pro. You can visit our website at hardwaremall.io. I'm Justin. Bye-bye.